Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, and my name is Farhan Mazhar, and today is 9th October 2020. The day is Friday, and today I am with the 10 Cambridge class. The subject we are studying is Physics 5054. And uh, today's target is uh, to do some MCQs on the topic of light in the in the previous la last uh, in the previous or last two weeks we have been working on the topic of light. We were studying the chapter of light. We have studied the uh, um, reflection and refraction. We have studied total internal reflection. We have studied the image formation in the lenses. We have studied the dispersion of light. We have image formation in the mirrors. We also have studied total internal reflection. So we will try today to do some MCQs which are related with the light. So in this video, we are going to work uh, on summer papers and we will be working from summer 2002. Uh, let's see how many questions of the topic of light we can attempt. The, there is a complex thing that the light topic is related with the waves and sounds and electromagnetic spectrum as well. So we will be only working purely on the MCQs which are related with the light. So let's start. So uh, the first uh, question on your screen is uh, from the topic of uh, light and this is the summer 2002 paper. And it's question number, uh, the first question uh, we can work on is, is question number 21. Okay, on your screen, question number 21, summer 2002 paper. An object O is placed in front of a plane mirror. A person looks into the mirror as shown in the diagram. In which position is the image O seen? Okay, let me take this to another place. Okay, so... So here is the object, okay? Let me open it in the pane. We can work. So, we can work. This thing. Okay, so you can see that we have a paint here. Uh, we have opened the paint and uh, so, uh, here is the object. So the first thing which you have learned in the image information in a mirror is that whenever you have to locate, what you will do, you will uh, join this with the, uh, the object with the mirror in such a way that the angle will be 90 degrees. Okay. The angle should be 90 degrees. So you see, here you can see this, this angle with the mirror. I have joined the object with the mirror and the angle with the mirror is of 90 degrees. It's a very technical uh, work, okay? So with the help of the scale, you can do that. Okay, then uh, what I will do, I will uh, check how much is this distance. Okay. So, zero one. Okay, so you see, uh, now check how much is this distance. Okay, check how much is this distance. Okay, check how much is this. Same distance behind the mirror. And join it uh, with the observer. This. Okay. Again, join this point. Okay, 
join this join this point with the observer okay i'm just showing you how this is done so if i draw a normal here let me increase the size so you can you see these light questions So now I will draw a normal. So we will draw a normal. I will draw a normal. It makes ninety degree angle. you will see this angle of incidence and this angle of reflection will be equal to each other automatically you see how i have done it the main thing is that you join the object with the mirror in such a way that the line will be making 90 degree angle with the mirror and you produce it behind the mirror then you check the distance of the object on that line from the mirror the same distance you will take behind the mirror on that line you will join that point with the observer then join the object with this point and this is my incident ray this is my reflected ray then i draw a normal here if you check this angle of incidence this angle of reflection they will be 100% equal to each other so uh you see where this big red line intersected this black line there the object is formed so the image uh, sorry there the image is formed so the image is formed at the position b image is formed at the position b you see um, right now i don't think that you have this actual paper in front of you but we have to do this work on the paper with the help of the scale and the protector so the option is b the person will see the image of the object at the position b so i hope you have understood this this is question number uh, 21 of summer 2002 not an easy one and uh, the image will be seen at the position b do you understand hello Yes, sir. Okay. So let's move to the next question. Summer, and this is summer two thousand and two, and the question is twenty-two on your screen. For a certain parallel-sided glass block, the value of the sine of I divided by sine of R is one point five zero. The ray of light passes through the block and. emerges at an angle of 60 degree to the surface of the block what is the value of the given angle marked as x okay it's a little uh you know a uh, tricky question so let me take it to the paint and there we can work on it okay so so i can show you how i copy it. do you have your calculators with you do you have your calculator with you yes sir okay so here here we go can i place that so uh this is not the angle of refraction you see 
the angle of refraction will be this one. This is the angle of refraction. So, you know, this normal makes 90 degree angle with the surface of the glass. So, if that angle is 60, so this angle is 60, so how much will be this? 90 minus 60. So, this angle will be how much? 30. Will be 30. So, uh, the value of the sine of uh, I by sine of R is given. Sine of I by sine of R is 1.50. But if you uh, remember, here the light is entering from the uh, dense medium into the rare medium. So when I will apply here the formula, the formula will be sine r, which is 30, sine of r, sine of r by sine of i. But the value he gave you is not this. The value he gave is 1.5, but that is sine i by sine r. Do you understand? Yes, sir. He did not give the value of sine r by sine i. He gave you the value of sine i by sine, sine r. r. So, if I take yes. sine, because here, we always take upstairs that, form, that angle which is in the rare medium. So, sine of r should come upstairs. So this value will become 1 divided by, he said, 1.5 value. So because we have taken the reciprocal or reciprocal, so I will write here 1.5. 1 divided by 1.5. So the value of the sine R, that will be sine 30. If you have your calculator, so I can tell you the calculation. So sine R, sine 30 basically. Okay. If you have a calculator, I can tell you, just do this calculation and give me the answer. Yes, sir. I have calculator. Okay. So whatever I'm saying, do that. Uh, so we will cross multiply sine 30 equals to. Sine 30? Yeah. Equals to. Sir, it is equal to 0 0.5. Multiply 1.5 equals to. Sir, so 0 0.75. Shift sign answer equals to. Shift sign. Answer equals to. 48.5. 48.5. This angle X is the angle of incidence in the dense medium. So the x value should be the value you are saying. How much you are saying? 48.5. Yes, sir. Okay. So the object is D. Yes, sir. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so these are the two questions which were on the topic of life from the summer 2002 paper. So let's move to the next uh, paper. Okay. So here we go to the next paper. The, the next paper is summer 2003. And we are working on the topic of light only. Okay. So reflection and refraction. This is our topic. So we are only working on those MCQs which are related with the light. Okay. The question number 19, summer 2003 paper. The topic is light. A boy stands beside a girl in front of a large plain mirror. They are both the same distance from the mirror as shown. Where does the boy see the girl's image? So, uh, if you... Where the boy see the image of the girl? Okay? Let me take this photo into the paint and we will try to... We will try to work on it. Okay. So let me take this photo. And okay. So okay. So this is that uh, that question to you. Where the boy will see the image of the girl? 
so the technique is very simple i told you uh, before that you uh, said i remember it's very simple so what we will do you join the object with the mirror in such a way that the line will make 90 degree angle with the mirror so you can yes, see sir. this okay okay so check what is the distance of the object from the mirror take the same distance behind the mirror okay yes. so i will take now so this, this much is the distance with the scale we will measure it this much is the distance between the object and the mirror same distance behind the mirror on this line join that point with the observer observer is this boy okay where uh, wherever uh i mean wherever this line the green line cuts the mirror join it with the object okay join it with the object object okay, okay. then i will uh draw another line and let me make it and here i will draw normal normal is a line which makes 90 degree angle with the mirror at that point okay so if you will check this angle this angle will be the angle of incidence and this angle if you check that will be the angle of reflection automatically they will be equal to each other so you see where this green and the red red line intersected behind the mirror that is where this boy will see the image of this girl so the choice is a the boy will see the image of the girl at the location a do you understand yes sir okay so for question number 19 the choice is a okay sir okay so now we are on the next question this is question number okay a ray of light it's a very technical question a ray of light is incident on one side of a rectangular glass block its path is plotted through the block and out through another side which path is not possible you see uh let me take this diagram to the so i can okay to see to some people it's, it looks very easy because they just remember a b c d and but i am trying to teach you the actual method how do i decide that what is the option so here here i got those uh, diagrams so look at the i am supposed to look where the diagram is wrong okay so suppose here if i draw a normal here okay okay and another normal here good light entered from here into the glass rare to dense bend it towards normal is good here the light entered from the glass into the into the air from dense medium into rare medium bend it away from the normal so a is perfectly good look at the b figure let me draw a normal here let me draw a normal here is yes, sir here we go the light entered from air into the glass bend it towards normal is good okay let me draw a normal here let me draw a normal here okay at this point the process of total internal reflection took place the process do you realize that this is total internal reflection here where the cursor is do you realize that what sir can you repeat here, here the process of total internal reflection took place the light did not went out yes sir okay so this angle of incidence 
here this is the angle of incidence this it is more than the critical angle that's why the process of total internal reflection took place okay. now i will draw a normal hill it's little off but for your understanding it's good okay so yeah, yeah. so i have drawn a normal here here the light enter from glass into the air look at this angle of incidence look at this angle of incidence look at this angle of incidence is quite large this angle of incidence is more than this angle of incidence if this angle of incidence was more than critical and the total internal reflection took this the angle of incidence here is also more than the critical then so why the light went up it should have been totally internally it should have been totally internally reflected here it should have not gone out because this angle of incidence is quite large mm -hmm. it's more than uh, the Three. previous angle of incidence so the total internal reflection should have taken place but that has not taken place so this diagram is wrong <laughs> Do you realize okay, this is it's a bit tricky the topic of slide i told you yeah. that only from the lectures or only from reading the uh, textbook you will not be able to turn the paper so this one is wrong the b one is wrong so we were supposed to pick which one is wrong b is wrong so b is my answer which path is not possible b is not possible a c and d they all are good okay do you understand Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. The question number twenty-one is on your screen. It says, "What is true for real images formed by a converging lens? Whenever the real images are formed by the converging lens, they are inverted. They are inverted upside down. And is it they are inverted? That is a good answer." they are on the same side of the lens as the object that's wrong they can never be shown on a screen that is also wrong the real images can always be found on a screen they cannot be seen by the human eye they can be seen by the human eye so the only right answer the only right statement he gave is a part they are inverted they are inverted the real images are uh, inverted So this was question twenty one and twenty two, and this was the paper summer two thousand and three. So there were only two questions on the topic of light. Okay, so uh, we are moving to the next uh, next paper, which is uh, summer two thousand and four. Okay, so now we have in front of you summer two thousand four paper. and let me open the question on topic light okay on your screen we have question number 20 an image is formed in a plane mirror and this is the technique which we used in the last two question you know okay which statement must be correct you see uh, this x is the angle of sorry this y is the angle of incidence and this x is angle of reflection so these two angles must be equal to each other so x and y should be equal to each other because y is the angle of incidence and x is the angle of reflection they are equal to each other 
and the distance of the image and the distance of the object from the lens they are always equal to each other in the plane mirror so what is the choice choose the correct option <laughs> The angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection. The distance of the image from the lens and the distance of the object from the lens, they should be equal to each other. So what is the right choice? Will be equal. Yes, uh, uh, W's. Uh, uh, X is uh, C part. C is the correct answer, sir. C, X equals to Y. Angle of reflection and angle of incidence to each other and D not equal to D1, the distance of the object and the distance of the image, they both are equal to each other. So, sir, C is the right choice. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Oh, very good. Very heavy question. Uh oh. Ah, okay, so on your screen, question number 21, one of the most, uh, you might remember its answer, but it's tricky. So learn how the technique, how do I decide which is the option. A ray of light enters a glass block at an angle of incidence I, but still an angle of refraction R in the glass. Several different values of I and R are measured and a graph is drawn for sine I against sine R, which graph is correct? Okay, so let me take this to the paint and then show you how this works. Uh, it's not that difficult, but if you understand the idea how, how I decide. So, on your screen, these graphs are showing. Hmm? The slope of this graph. When I gave you a lecture on this thing, I told you the slope of this graph is sine i by sine r, which is equal to the refractive index of the glass. You remember? Do you remember? Right, sir. Do you remember this thing? Which thing? Can you repeat, please? The, the slope of this graph, sine i by sine. The slope of this graph represents the refractive index of the glass. Sine I by sine R is equal to the refractive index of the glass. And this is represented by the slope of this graph. So let me take the slope of this graph. So, sir, what is the Y value here? Sine I value. What is this? Approximately how much it can be? 0 0.75. It might be, I think it might be, um, maybe, 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 maybe 0 0.7, maybe approximately, approximately 0 0.7, okay, divided by, what is the x value here? How much is the x value? 0 0.5. Okay. So do you have a calculator? I'm trying to find out the slope of this graph. On your calculator, do 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.5. What's the answer? Sir, 1.4. Oh, good. 1.4. You know, the first one, this answer, the slope is 1.4. The refractive index of the glass is actually 1.5, 1.4. This is the right answer, sir. Let me show you, these two cannot be the answer because they have negative slope. The refractive index will not be negative. So let's try on the on the on this last one. 
the D option. That is not actually the answer. But let me show you that this is not the answer. So uh, let me draw. Uh, let's say you, from any number here, zero point five one. Let me take it to this. So let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. What is the value of the y here? Approximately, it may be zero point seven, maybe zero point six. Whatever value you like, you can take. 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So it's just an estimate, okay? It will give you the idea. Zero. Let's say I suppose it's 0 0.6. Suppose, suppose, suppose. Okay? What is the x value here? How much is the x value? The rise and run. One. I'm actually trying to find the slope of this graph. So 0 0.6 divided by 1. That will be the refractive index. The answer will be the refractive index. So this is 0 0.6. Okay? You know the glass, its refractive index is 1.5. Okay? 1.5, 1.4, 1.45. This is the refractive index. So which graph gave you the right slope? B and C are perfectly wrong because they are showing negative slope. A and D, they have the competition. When I estimated the slope of the graph of A, and the slope of this graph represents the refractive index. In A, the answer is 1.4. And in B, the answer is 0 0.6. So what is the best choice? Because the glass have refractive index approximately 1.4, 1.5, 1.3. So what's the choice? A, sir. A is the clear choice. Okay, so whenever this question comes in front of you, you should know how do you actually decide that which graph is the correct graph. Okay, sir. Okay, do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you are going to the next. Yes, sir. Summer 2004, a student starts to draw a ray diagram for an object at O near a thin convex lens, but is not sure whether the image is formed at X or at Y. So, the correctly draw image is, so you see here, here, you know, here, here they will not intersect. On this side, they will not intersect. If if you want to, I can I can do this in the paint so to show you how this actually works. And it's easy. Okay. Okay. So the technique is on this side, you know, these rays they are not intersecting each other. On this side, they are not intersecting. So here, the, on this side, the image will not be formed. On the right side, the image is not formed. So the, uh, the next technique is we will prolong these rays um, behind. We will prolong these rays behind. I will prolong these rays behind the lens. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so, okay, then I will prolong this ray also behind the lens. Okay. So, you see, where, when I prolong them behind the lens, they intersected. So, wherever they intersected, the image will be formed. So, the image will be formed on the position X, and this image is called virtual image. This image is larger than the height of the object. So this image will be virtual. This will be erect. I mean upright. We also call it erect. And this image is uh, virtual. It's erect. It's magnifying. Okay, let's see the option. Do you understand the ray diagram? The construction I did? Yes, sir. Okay. So, beta, this is little, uh, you know, the light. Topic is little because we have to actually do the construction. The correct ray diagram, the, the correctly drawn image is 
real? No, 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 no. Be real and no, real is not there. It's, it should be virtual and it should be formed at X. So, what is the choice? B, sir. So, what is the choice? B, sir. B. B, B. B is the right choice. Virtual and formed at X. Okay. So, this was the summer 2004 paper. Okay. We have another question on life. Topic of life. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, this is the question which I just explained to you yesterday. Which diagram correctly shows the dispersion? Dispersion of light. White light by a glass prism. When the light yes. into the prism, at that very moment, the light should split. And on the top, the red should come. And on the bottom, the violet should come. So what's the choice? The C part. C. C is the right choice. Everybody understands this? Yes. So when light enters into the prism, the light should split at that moment. And when the light emerges from the prism, on the top, the red color appears. And on the bottom, the violet color appears. We have that code word. We say Roy G. Biv. Roy, R-O-Y-G-B-I-V. This is the code word for the order of the colors. So this was question 22, uh, 23, sorry, summer 2003. So that's it. This is was the, these are the four, I think four or five questions, four or five questions came on the topic of light reflection and refraction uh, in this paper, summer 2004. So your time is over. And today we were able to only do summer 2002, summer 2003, summer 2004, just three papers. And the reason is because when we work on the questions of light and uh, they take uh, time to do the construction. So how, who, uh, so uh, let me stop the recording. So thank you very much, everybody. My name is Farhan Mazar and today is 9th of October 2020. The day is Friday. We were studying the subject physics 5054. I was with the class 10 Cambridge. And today we have done MCQs on the topic of light. And we were only able to do the summer 2002 paper, summer 2003 paper, summer 2004 paper. We did the MCQs which were related with the topic of the light. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day and God bless you all. Have a good day. Thank you.